Start with the heavy eating. Well, you got the first word in, Arthur. Uh, I'm Adam Misk, and we're all at Koth Lakeside. You guys want to introduce yourselves? I am the Boobvich, bonuses, heavy weapons, sexy guy. Otherwise known as Arthur. Yo, I'm Pudding. What's up? Freaky King from DMS. I'm the main heavy. And this is two, TF2 Foresight. Today we're looking at the map uh, Koth Lakeside. You guys' eating is really distracting me. I'm going to spawn. Uh, this is a King of the Hill map, so three minutes on the clock. First to four points, right? Yep. First to four, three, three points half. is half time, is UGC rules. Alright, uh, these maps, or both sides of this map are symmetrical, so what's going on on your side is going on on the other side. If you take the left rollout out of spawn, You've got a small health kit in the battlements, and two small ammo kits, and then a mid health kit right here. And you get to the point. Middle rollout has nothing, it's low ground, there's a little bridge above it. Right rollout to the pool house takes you past two small health kits that act functionally like a mid kit, only a little worse. A mid ammo kit, and then the pool house, which has the well fought over full health kit. There's a full ammo kit on the point, and that pretty much showed you the whole map. It's King of the Hill, so it's not a lot of complication. It's basically exactly the same on the other side. Uh, Hood, did you want to go over some of the more nuanced stuff about the map? Um, in terms of just strictly map stuff? Uh... Yeah, if you, like, for instance, where you are right now basically is where most NGs will set up their dispenser, so that's where you should look for it. Oh yeah, totally. Dispenser right here, or you can get a little creative, like over there, or even sometimes up there. But uh, somewhere around here is just so important to keep your pyro and heavy, and even demo at full ammo and now health. Those, uh, teleporters go up a lot over in this corner on the right. Or in the corner over here, all the way on the left by the pool house. Do you know? Of any yeah, other you want to keep the teleporters back a little, um, so they're not I quite mean, up in the action where if, someone if all, like a spy can camp it. It's kind of like a pretty small map, so like teleporter yeah. isn't a huge priority. Yeah, you should only be setting up your teleporter after you've like. Like, you set up your dis your gun, get a dispenser going up, like, like once you have the point and things are kind of settling down, that's when you want to start getting up your teleporter. Uh, what else? Did Can you want I to demonstrate quickly show you? some heavy gameplay of what happens on Gothlike side? If you really yes, want please. to spectate me real quick. I am. So basically, this is what happens when the heavy rolls out. He'll come up here, come stairs, and he'll oh, there's a sniper. So he'll be like, okay, let me go left, maybe. Oh, there's a sniper. And then he ends up just sitting here <laughs> and eating sandwiches. Yeah, sniper play can be pretty annoying. Um, yeah, as far as rollouts go, you know, you'll see... You'll see teams either opt to roll out, like, towards the point, or the demo likely get pretty aggressive up on the point, heavy soon to follow, or... Um, teams will like decide to just roll out into this pool house, which, um, like, the pool house can be like a really tempting place to roll out to, considering like it's it's like it's an important thing to take control of and have control of. But at the end of the day, it's all about the point. And a lot of teams like if you try and roll out towards pool house and keep your heavy classes in here. Um, it's really easy to just sort of get a, get boxed in there and spammed out. Some um, NGs like to put teleporter exits and mini sentries in the water, so when a weak player a comes to shady. get when a weak player comes to get health, beep beep beep, and then they die. <laughs> yeah, that's really annoying. That myself. I I have. It's <laughs> ridiculous. So as Arthur mentioned earlier, uh, a, who's gonna have a lot of play on this? especially during the mid-fight, is going to be the sniper. Um, they basically get to see the whole point from anywhere back along this whole ridge. 
and it can be kind of dangerous. But uh, I don't know. When teams are of equal level, I notice snipers sort of balance each other out, and it's when your sniper goes down that you have to really be careful. Yeah. Um... But so keeping that in mind, your you know fast aggressive classes are gonna want to think of him as one of their priority picks for this map because it's pretty open. Yeah, you're gonna want to send your your spy after the sniper soldier maybe. You know, you've got a scout that can bonk over. That's another option as well. What else about this map? Crit, you know, being Koth, Crits Creek is used a lot. So the the arc of the point is pretty solid with the way stickies fly. Like, just over the point on either side of the stairs. So you have to be really careful of those, like, blind Crits Creek yeah. Yeah, you have to be really careful when you're sitting like near these stairs, because um, if you don't have someone with vision up on the point, it's very easy for stickies and spam and whatnot to just come right over and you have no idea. It's always important to have someone, like if you're not holding forward, um, at least has vision of where they're moving. Communication on Koth is so important. You always want to know where their medic is, where the combo is moving. To the soldiers out there, it's kind of hard to get aggressive because people are just going to put mini sentries right in this valley and the heavy is going to be down there. But if you notice some key picks going down, there's a lot of vertical geometry that's really fun to jump off of if uh, you think the time is right. So keep that oh yeah, it's double jumping heaven. Like even if there's a mini sentry, I think you can still you, you go fast. You can still you jump like shot and get to yourself. their. Um, if you can just get behind them, like that's that's usually pretty good. The other option for soldier is to just if your combo is holding in the valley, just hold the pool house, get up on the terrain in here, and deny entrance. Spam it out with your scout backing you up, and get aggressive and, when yeah. people go down. Uh, Dome Man's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's simple rollout, simple job here with the medic, engineer. Spy routes are pretty straightforward. There's not a lot. There's just the pool house and the point. That's the two ways to get to the. Other yeah, side. two ways spies are gonna come in. They're either gonna wanna like shoot for this ammo pack, uh, opposite of pool house, or they're just gonna find some way through pool house. Oh yeah, engineers, this ammo pack is the man, but it can be risky. You're putting your head up within the line of fire to come get it. I, I think I think for an engineer to go, because like, it's important for your engineer to go grab that health pack, or that ammo pack before their spy does. So other players, be mindful that that's basically for your engineer. Go find his dispenser if you need ammo. Or if your own spy wants to use it, then that's okay too. As long as you guys are using it and not them. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Think there's anything else to talk about this map? It is pretty simple. Level three. Oh yeah. Yay or nay? Um, um. Well, I'm always a fan of level threes. Like, <laughs> I think. Yeah, if you can. I think my mini sentries are a cop out, but that's because I'm old school TF2. Like I know that it's actually quite useful. I just refuse. Level to threes it. can definitely have their their moments on this map, especially if you get one wrangled like up on your own like sort of battlements area. So if they try like even if you if you're like holding the point and you like you can always you have something to back up to in case you start losing numbers, you're in a bad fight or something, you can just back up behind the point and bait them into your level three. So I've I've seen I've seen teams do that before. But many centuries as well for shutting down flanky classes from getting behind you and stuff. Always good. So this is one of those maps where it's actually kind of hard to flank because there's only the two routes. But if you can flank, it becomes like a scout soldier playground. Oh yeah. There's, there's health kits in this tunnel. There's health kit on the battlements. There's so many hiding places. There's little ledges to stand on. It's terrific. Yeah, so. because of like the height, like differences towards like the back parts of the map, scouts and soldiers can outrun, outmaneuver 
basically all the classes oh. except for scout and soldiers. Oh yeah, and you can actually stand on the spot. I forgot that. Yeah. Whoops, that <laughs> fell. <laughs> well, I don't know. Not sure how much use that is. And another it's tactic no for heavies. Use. Another tactic for heavies is to work this pillar. So like if you have crit screeg, you can just work this pillar around and sweep everyone off the point and vice versa. Over here. If someone's in this corner, you know, he's instantly dead. And then there's this gap you can see through house. So if you have a crit screeg, it's a pretty good spot. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's any special way to run Crits Krieg on this map, other than always know where their medic is when you're nearing Crits Krieg. Yeah, that's gonna be on the pool house players to sort of eye them out through the gaps. Yeah, around. that's that's what makes like pool house such a, a nice uh, place to just have control of. You get eyes on their valley. Get a nice full health pack right here. Alright, well, I, I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, we can talk about Kills. forward holding. Yeah, yeah. That's that's more forward strategy than the actual map. Oh, well, that's true. Like, if we want to do a how to play Highlander sometime, we can. <laughs> or how to play TF2, more like, because that's just the concept that people should know. You could really oh, kill a team's morale if, like, the majority of your team is controlling their. Battlement area by their well, spawn. That's like, it's um, very difficult for them to ever get out. That's the thing, though. If they start getting kills, the respawn timer yeah. gets more and more potent the closer you are to their spawn. Because it cuts. That's true. Real respawn is the time it takes you to become alive, and then the time it takes you to get to the fight. And if the fight is yeah. on your spawn door, your spawn time is effectively like five seconds. Yeah, the moment you start losing players in a forward hold or have a bad uber, it's time to back out. The forward yeah, hold is just nice so you can pop their uber before they get anywhere near the point. Yeah. Alright, well Which is I... reserved for the scout soldier <laughs> spy to get up. All right, well, force. I'm calling it, guys, because we're getting out of the realm of what is dependent on this map and what is just how to play it. So, it's a pretty uh, simple map. Hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, see you next week. Say bye, guys. Later. Pow. See you later. Screw you, Arthur.